Okay, what I want to do today is I want to send digital audio from my DAW to Kima and back again. And I'm going to do this with Dante. So, okay, why would you want to do this? Well, so if you're working in a DAW, you can then integrate Kima as a kind of effects unit. And you say, yeah, I can already do that. I just run audio out of my interface and back into Kima. But by doing it this way, we're avoiding converting the audio to analog and then re-digitizing it at the Paco or the Pacarana. Well, you say, okay, I could do that anyway. I could bounce out my audio to the disc, load it up into Kima and bring it back into my DAW, which is makes perfect sense, but this solution allows us to use this as a real-time effect. Of course, the Kima timeline, which allows us to schedule algorithms across time, can function as a replacement for the DAW in a lot of workflows. But also for me as a teacher, I work with a lot of DAW-oriented students, and this has the possibility to help them quickly integrate Kima into their workflow. So just a quick disclaimer, right now, as far as I know, you can only do this with audio that's at 48K, and it can only be done in stereo. What you're gonna need, First, you're going to need a Kima system, either a Paca or a Pacarana. I'm working on a Paca myself. You're going to need the Dante Avio USB, which is going to plug into your Kima system. And you're going to need the software for the Dante Virtual Sound Card. Just to emphasize, this is not Dante Via. This is Dante VSC, the Dante Virtual Sound Card. And then your DAW, whatever that may be. I'm going to show things in Logic today, but I've also done this in Pro Tools, and there's no reason you couldn't do it in Ableton or Reaper too. So just real quick, here's the Dante virtual sound card. It's running, right? I, if I hit here, I'll, I'd stop it. Uh, and I've got it hooked up to my Dante network, which is just my computer running to my switch, and then my switch running to the Dante Avio, which is plugged into my Paca. So here I am in Dante controller, and we can see on my network, here's the Avio on the Paca, and now this is the virtual sound card on the Mac. What the virtual sound card is doing is giving me eight virtual ins here and eight virtual outs here. So the way I've set this up is the one and two from my virtual sound card go into are received by left and right on the Paca, and then three and four are receiving from the Paca. So that means I send from one and two to the Paca, I receive on three and four. And then this five, six, seven, eight are all uh, unused at the moment. Now I'm on a Mac, so in order to make this work, I've set up an aggregate device. I'm sorry it's such a mess with all my ins and outs here, uh, or rather all my devices here. What I did was I created an aggregate device, which uh, this one here is Dante and Firebox. Firebox is my audio interface that's plugged into my computer. And I'm including the Dante Virtual Sound Card and the PreSonus Firebox in this aggregate device. So I just checked used, and so now here are the inputs of the PreSonus Firebox. Here are the inputs from the Dante Virtual Sound Card. Outputs, outputs. I don't really want to create another aggregate device from scratch here to show you how to do it, just because I've named the ins and outs of mine. So if I create a new one, I lose all those names. Hopefully this is relatively straightforward, or you can look up somewhere how to create aggregate devices if, if you're not sure. Okay, so here I am in Logic. I've just set up a simple three tracks here, uh, an EP, a uh, simple FM sound, and a, a lo-fi uh, drum beat. Now this is all well and good, um, but uh, you know, to my ears, this this little Genesis sound, the simple FM sound that I'm making, uh, it could use a little bit more sophistication. Let's just isolate that. Again, I love that kind of sound. But what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to remove this and make it again uh, from from scratch here. I'm going to add. Uh, so again, if I were doing this in Pro Tools, I'd probably send this out and then receive it back in. Logic has a really nice plugin setup that's called I.O. And this just sends to an output and then receive from an input. So I can send my output to be, again, see how I've labeled these, Dante 1, 2 to Paca, which is 9 and 10. Remember on my, on my aggregate device here, so 
output right is 9 and 10. That's the first two on the Dante Virtual Sound Card. And then I'm going to set my input to be 9, 10 from Paca. So once again, 9 and 10. Remember, we're coming in on 3 and 4. And so that should be all set. Okay. So now if I play this, we're getting no sound because we're missing the component here, which is now Kima. Okay, so here over in Kima, I have a couple little things that I've set up. Maybe we'll just start with chorusing. So I'm just going to play this sound. This is, uh, I, I believe, just a uh, prototype that I've brought over. And now uh, I've got that track soloed. And so oh, it's hard to look at these two things at the same time. Sends out to the Paca. We can see that that input is coming in on the Paca. And the uh, output is going out. And it's coming back into my track here. I can, of course, turn off that effect. Okay, that's not terribly exciting. Here's my usual favorite thing, a little bit of live granulation. Pretty neat. Spectral derangement. Space radio. Okay, I just killed that. And notice, uh, once I've killed it, no sounds coming through, right? Because nothing's passing through Kima. Okay, that's all neat. You know, if we do this, we can take both our EP and that sound. We could send them to a bus. Send them to the bus. And then have that IO on this track. And output to Paca. Input from Paca. Give them some signal. Turn off the solo. Okay. We go over to Kima and we add our U-verb light. And then we can adjust that in the same way with a regular reverb, right? Or I could go to my live granulator. Turn down that direct. Almost hit Command K there, but of course in my in my DAW I need to hit space, and that's all there is to it. So again, the idea here is now I'm sending audio digitally over to Kima and back, so I don't have to do any kind of conversions to get things in and out of my DAW, and I can do this in real time. Again, the disclaimer is we can only do it at 48k stereo. I think this is a really neat way to do Kima integration into your DAW and can open up opportunities for students and other people who are already really comfortable with their DAW and want to work out how to integrate Kima into that workflow.